Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to diagnose and test the accelerator pedal position sensors in case that you have any problem on this sensor. So I'm gonna show you guys how to test using the multimeter, using the scan tool, and I'm gonna explain the wind diagram for that as well. Before starting to analyze the diagram and perform the diagnostic, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel, please make sure you subscribe the channel for supporting us and for getting the notification when we upload new diagnostic videos. As you see, this is our accelerator pedal position sensor. As you see, we have two sensors inside, inside the unit that we call them APS-1 and APS-2. But before starting to analyze the wind diagram, why is it so important to check the accelerator pedal position sensor and what's gonna happen if this sensor is faulty? So basically ECM uses a signal from these two sensors to measure how far you are pressing the gas pedal and by receiving the signal from that it's, it's going to actuate the throttle body. But what's going to happen if these two sensors are faulty? As you see on the screen this is a fail safe mode for accelerator pedal position sensors and as you see if APS-1 fails ECM will look at the APS-2 signals of course it will set the fault code for APS-1 but it keeps working because it's receiving a signal from APS-2 if APS-2 fails it's gonna look at the signal from APS-1 but if both APS-1 and APS-2 fail engine RPM will be limited to something around 1500 as you see on the wind diagram itself so there is only one connector on the accelerator pedal position sensors. So we have three wires for APS-1 and three wires for APS-2. For each one, we have actually the power supply. So as you see, this one is a supply which is actually providing the five volt to the APS-1 and we have the supply for APS-2 as well. So it means for each one, we have one supply. I've seen some cars, they provide one supply for both of them but uh, some companies to stay on the safe side, they try to separate the supply. So this is the ground for APS-1 and we have the ground for APS-2 and signal for each one of them. So generally three pins per sensor. So two sensors, totally six wire. So I'm gonna show you how to inspect all these by a multimeter, but first of all, let's have a look at the scan tool. Just in case if you have the scan tool, you, you can use this diagnostic to uh, check if the output voltage of the sensors are okay. Let's just start reading the live data and see what we can get out of it. All right, my scan tool is connected. I go for diagnostic and ignition switch must be on, of course. Go for the system selection and here select the engine. And we're going to go for the live data. And we need to select these items, accelerator pedal position sensor and the voltage for number one and two. So as you see, we have accelerator pedal position sensor voltage for sensor one and sensor two. So you need to press okay. So you're gonna see the value on sensor one and sensor two. As you see, I haven't pressed the accelerator pedal yet. That's why it's zero. Our sensor 1 is giving me this voltage and sensor 2 this voltage. 376 millivolt on sensor 2, 747 millivolt on sensor 1. There is something interesting about these two, just to remember how these two voltages from these two sensors are actually correlated. So as you see the voltage on sensor 2, if you double the voltage on sensor 2, it's going to be almost the voltage that you are getting from sensor 1. So it really doesn't matter how far you are pressing the gas pedal. The voltage on sensor 1 is actually double the voltage on sensor 2. And if I press the gas pedal right now, I'm pressing the gas pedal right now, you see what's going to happen. So I'm pressing the gas pedal, you see the voltage is changing. So again, if I keep the gas pedal on 10%, again you see the voltage on sensor 2 is half of the voltage on sensor 1 so basically the voltage in these two should be increasing in both of them this is how they are correlated and if I press the gas pedal all the way to the bottom to 100% you see the voltage on sensor 1 is almost 3.8 volt and on sensor 2 is 1.9 volt which is exactly same scenario as I explained earlier so and if I release it it's gonna go back to the normal so this is how we check the sensor 1 and sensor 2 output signal on accelerator pedal. 
if you are receiving the signal over here it means the sensors are working and they are sending the information to the ECM because you are reading this information from the ECM if ECM shows you everything properly it means there is nothing wrong with that sensor with the wiring and the ECM itself but of course the reason that you are doing this diagnostic right now is because one of the sensors might be broken or faulty if the output voltage in any of them is different it means the sensor could be faulty the wiring or ECM but we go step by step of course the first and easiest thing is going to be checking the connector on the accelerator pedal itself but then we go for checking the wiring so back on the wind diagram as you see uh, for checking the output signal for each sensor so this is the signal for sensor one so if i check the output voltage from here i'm going to read the output voltage from aps1 exactly like what we had on the scan tool and this is going to be the output signal for sensor two so i'm going to need to find these wires and i need to check the power supply as well for example if sensor 2 is giving you the fault you need to check the power supply on sensor 2 from here and the power supply on sensor 1 you can check it on the accelerator pedal you don't need to go on the uh, pcm straight away you can check it over here if the power supply is provided here it means the ecm and the wiring all the way to the sensor is okay here is the pedal i have already removed the pedal so you guys can see what's going on in here so we have one connector up there so here's your pedal so here is the connector as i explained earlier and as you see on the screen we have six wires on this connector so we are counting from here from this side so pin number one the yellow one is actually the signal for aps2 pin number two which is a blue wire is actually the supply for aps2 and pin number three which is the supply for aps1 which is actually a gray wire and then pin number four is actually a white wire which is the signal output from aps1 i have two grounds which are pin number five and six ground for aps1 and ground for aps2 so all wires are exactly like what we see in the workshop manual all right right now i'm going to check the power supply on aps1 and aps2 all right guys as you see, I have already back propped pin number two and three, two power supply for APS2, and number three, the gray wire for the power supply on APS1. Uh, ignition switch is on. I'm gonna check the power supply right now for each one of them to see if ECM is providing the power supply. And because this supply is provided by the ECM, we should be able to get five volts when ignition switch is on. All right, I put the multimeter here on voltage and I go one by one so pin number three this one is actually the power supply for APS one as you see we are getting five volts it means this one is okay and if I go for the second one pin number two this blue wire is actually the APS two power supply this one is getting five volts as well so on this card the power supply for each one of them is different on different wire so if one power supply goes faulty ecm sets the fault code for that uh, position sensor but the other one will be working as a backup if you see the power supply is not provided you need to check the wiring between here and the ecm because ecm is providing the power supply for that sensor if you have the power supply if the power supply is okay but you still have the fault code it means the problem could be something inside the sensor itself for checking the sensor we can check the sensor output voltage or we can check the sensor internal resistance so for output voltage if you remember pin number one this yellow wire is actually the output signal for APS2 pin number four this white wire is actually the output signal for APS1. I have already back prop pin number one, the output signal for APS2, and pin number four, the output signal for APS1. And I'm gonna check the output voltage right now. As you remember, when we check the output voltage with the scan tool, the output voltage for APS2 was half of the signal from APS1. So we're gonna measure it right now with multimeter. So that step that I explained earlier was for checking with the scan tool but if you don't have the scan tool you can perform the diagnostic right now with the multimeter on multimeter i'm going to select voltage as you see we are measuring 
745. This was exactly what we got in the scan tool. So this shows that this sensor is functioning just fine. And now I'm gonna press the gas pedal. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna just change the position by my hand. Value is increasing, it's almost four volts. So this is on APS-1. So if we go for the APS-2, signal should be half of the APS-1. Let's just check it when accelerator pedal is released. So right now, as you see, the signal is almost half of the APS-1 when we are not pressing the gas pedal is uh, 0.376. And if I press the gas pedal, the output voltage is gonna increase. And when I'm fully pressing the gas pedal, the output voltage is 1.9, which is exactly half of the APS-2 in fully press the gas pedal. This confirms that sensors are working properly uh, because they are generating the same output voltage at the, as they should. If you see the output voltage is not okay, it means the sensor is faulty, considering that the power supply was provided. If you read different value with multimeter compared to the time that you check the sensor with the scan tool, it means something in between, between the sensor and ECM is malfunctioning. For example, if you are reading proper value on the sensor itself, but the scan tool shows you something different, it could be the wiring between ECM and the sensor or the ECM itself. So that's exactly why we need to verify, even if we are using the scan tool when we have the fault, we need to verify the output voltage on the sensor itself. Of course, you can go to the next step to check the wiring one by one, as I showed you earlier in other videos, how to find the pins, how to check the wires for the open circuit or short circuit. There is another step for the diagnostic that we can perform for checking the sensor's internal resistance. Basically, we can remove the sensor and check the internal resistance and how this resistance changes when we are actually pressing the gas pedal. All right, for checking the sensor internal resistance, as you see on the screen, if we check the internal resistance between pin number three and four, we are actually checking the internal resistance on APS-1. So right here, I'm gonna use these two pins to insert them over here. This is pin number three, and this is pin number four. I put this one on the resistance. If I measure the resistance, I'm gonna get 1.7 kilo ohm. And if I press the gas pedal, you see the resistance is dropping. The resistance should drop because the output voltage is supposed to increase. Okay, so this confirms that APS-1 is working. And for APS-2, we need to check the resistance between pin number one and two. All right, so I'm gonna change this one between pin number one and two. So you see the resistance this time is different because the resistance should be higher as well. As you guys remember, the voltage on APS-2 is half of the APS-1. So we should have higher resistance to drop the voltage. Right now we have 2.36 kilo ohm. And if I press the gas pedal, of course resistance value drops as well to 1.8 kilo ohms, confirming that this sensor is working properly as well. So this is basically how you check the internal resistance on the sensor itself. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, thank you very much for supporting us by subscribing and liking the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic videos.